Hi everyone, welcome to another release webinar of Keep Your Process Analyzer. So today we will showcase the features of uh, 2019.2. So I'm your host today, my name is Mary. I'm sitting here with two presenters today for the webinar. We have first up, they will, they will yes. be showing us <laughs> all the demo the new features. Yeah, hi, hi everybody, Timo here and uh, eager to show you the new stuff. Okay, and then opposite us we have Holly. Hi all, Holly, product owner, process analyzer. Yes. Welcome to the webinar. Yes, so welcome both of the presenters and welcome uh, to all the attendees. So without further ado, let's get started. So you're here again, Keep Your Process Analyzer 2019.2 release webinar. If you have any questions, uh, uh, feedback, just type into the chat box and then we will take in your requests. So as I said uh, earlier, we're focusing on Keep Your Process Analyzer today. So it's the pro process mining and intelligence part of our business operating system. So, we will go through the uh, features now, one by one. I'll just make a demo a presenter, and he will take us on the right. Excellent. Okay, all right. So let's get started with the new features and functionalities. So today we will be looking at uh, the enhanced chart views with the filters and multiple axis definitions. We're going to check the quick search tool for projects and models. And in 19.2 version also the our continuous support for Microsoft Excel is, is, uh, uh, is, is still there. So we have the support for the new Microsoft Excel 2019 in our Excel client, which connects to the same cloud and server environments. So everybody has always the choice of using Excel or the web browser for checking the QPR process analyzer models. And then we have the, as an extra item, we have launched the training video library for QPR process analyzer. So we'll be providing you the link. And uh, we know many people have already been there checking the videos, but now it's kind of officially launched as part of the product. Okay, let's get started. Uh, I am actually going to start now with the quick search for projects and models. It's sort of so uh, obvious there in the user interface that, uh, that, that it will be displayed in, in, in all the steps. So basically what we have here uh, is the, the illustration of the new user interface with the new drop-down search projects and models tool, which has these great goodies, which we are going to soon see. So three main elements we have the model name over here uh, presented all the time and then also the filter name so you know that you can save your filter so that everybody can then choose from those predefined filters with the name so now this model name and the filter name are easily visible here and once you click, click that drop down what you see is the quick search so just start typing in the first couple of letters of your projects or models and then this list which may be a very very long we have customers who have like a hundreds of models in, in in one environment so you can easily find the the model that you are looking for and there is like this this sort of uh area that that you see that the new project is started here and then under that project there are the models that belong to that project so all of these are process analyzer models and then with the name order to cache which is the product uh, model name now you immediately also see the in memory status here whether it's green or sort of a gray and then you see the amount of cases so you can easily uh, uh, select the model that you you want to get uh, you want to use by those two um, uh, quick, that quick information in case you need more details you are always free to go here to the information and then click that and this is available for all the models just hover on top of the model name and then this small icon will be presented and clicking this gives you the model details 
and the model details look like this. So this, by default, it is showing all this information from the model. Basically, it is even possible to customize this. This is also now serving the, the technical analyst who is like concerned about the model ID names, but it actually shows you the cases, events, event types, some basic information of the model, case attribute names, and uh, sort of the last modified dates and that kind of stuff, as well as some of the other technical parameters that are here. Okay, so this is this is the, the first feature and let me quickly show you how it works in action. So when we go to the process analyzer, we have the flow chart over here. It's this simple. You just click on here and you can change, okay, dynamic P2P, 9.9 thousand cases. I click to that and I'll get that model and I go to the default screen of that. So now we see that I'm running dynamic P2P with 9.9 thousand cases with the green symbol because it's now loaded in memory. And uh, I can also like uh, from here take the model details. So checking what are the details for this model. And then when I'm about to open another model like the incident management model, I can check the details first. Okay, this was the model uh, created last year, October. Okay. That might be the right model, or then I can go to the OK manufacturing model, order to cast manufacturing model, click on that, and, and, and we immediately get it here. I'm using the default filter over here, which is like this, but I would also go to the steel plates only. And now I'm looking at the order to cast manufacturing with the steel plates only. And it's nicely over here visible all the time that this is my model, and, I, and this is the filter that I'm using. So nice improvements uh, for those who have multiple models and, uh, and multiple uh, filters. And also who, who then need to, need to locate the, the, the right models. And how the search project and models works, if I'm interested in order to CAS, just typing something in the beginning gives me those models. Or P2P, I see double over here. Or let's say the... Uh, BPM challenge model, okay, I get to that model. So just writing a little bit beginning here gives you the, the projects and the models that are there very quickly. Okay, if you have any questions of these features, uh, feel free to, uh, to type into the chat and uh, I'm going to move to the, um, to the next one. All right, that was a quick search. So now, a little bit of the, um, sorry, <laughs> here, let me go to the, oh, come on, I can't start. Okay, here, this one, yes. <laughs> So, uh, easy to define KPIs with chart view filters. So, there's a lot of improvements in the chart view functionality. And uh, a couple of the images I want you to remember is that uh, uh, in this image, you see the amount of cases on this axis. Okay. And then on the other dimension, you see the case duration. So from this, we can see that the amount of cases has grown up. So it is increasing the amount of cases. And at the same time, the duration for the cases is also going up. So we can have the cases axis over here and the duration axis over here. And uh, that, that, that means that you can have basically whatever KPIs and then use the two axes and then and have them displayed in those two axes. And the other thing I want you to remember is that a chart view is super powerful. You can easily create the charts that have a lot of uh, uh, kind of a detailed KPI specified. Like in this picture, we have the average case duration is in days is used here in this axis. The case starting month is used in the horizontal x-axis here. The purchase order cost 
is used as the size of the bubble over here. So now you see that the bigger purchase orders have the bigger, bigger bubbles. And then the purchase organization itself, which is displayed over here, there are four different colors. So the colors specify the actual purchase organization. So we can, we can show a lot of information in a chart view uh, chart. Now, in addition to showing a lot of information, we can now in 19.2 version, we can also have, we can also specify filters that specifically limit the data that is shown over here. And now you see the chart view filter section over here. So now the cases that we have, we are showing in this picture, all have these in common. So they all must start with the event type purchase requisition created. So that's a one filter that has been applied to this chart. So the chart is only showing the cases that chart uh, start with this particular event type. Then they also must immediately go through purchase order created to PO changed value. So there must be a change in the PO value after the PO is created in order for the PO uh, purchase, uh, purchase order to be shown in this chart. And then also the case must belong to receiving plans. So there are only three receiving plans. And here we see that there are four purchase organizations who are serving these three production plans. So we can have multiple filters in the chart. So now with this functionality, the chart view can, we, can be used to create all kinds of charts that you want to use as a standalone graphics, standalone, standalone charts, maybe in your radiator screen, or you can embed those inside the dashboards. So dashboards can contain multiple copies of the chart views. Okay, and uh, I'm going to a little bit show you how the details of the chart view look like, but this is basically the functionality that we now offer, and it, it in nutshell, it gives you the possibility to design and create basically whatever charge you want. Okay, and this is just a summary of the KPI designer functionality. So you see that in this measures tab, we have now added second measure as well and the other measures over here. Then in this uh, KPI designer dimensions, you see that as, as the example previously was showing, we have the horizontal x-axis, but we have the series, the z-axis and slicing dimensions that you can also use in the charts. And then the KPI designer sort of the general part is showing the visualization parameters uh, and then kind of basic setting for what objects are gonna be uh, presented in the chart. And then this, very important added possibility to use a chart view filter functionality. So all of this is inside the KPI designer. And then when we look at the chart view filter, clicking here opens us the chart view settings, KPI editor and editing the filter. So this filter is basically capable of including and excluding all kinds of items to the chart view based on these flexible rules over here. And once you select one rule, then it gives you the easy to use drop downs for the parameters, like specifying the region needs to be hosted and applying the filter. Okay, this is a chart view. So how does it work in practice? Well, in practice, it works very well. So you just go to your process analyzer tool and, and, and go to the chart view and, and start kind of uh, creating your first first charts. Let me take the sort of the, uh, my, my favorite order to gas model. Obviously using this uh, nice uh, drop down and, and quick search. So uh, we have the order to gas model over here and the chart view by default is showing the amount of the cases by the starting month over here. And this is the settings button. So we open this and we get this KPI designer that already was sort of a, uh, that we went through. So now we can specify here column charts. We can change, of course, to the other kind of dimensions and so on. 
I'm not going to go through the, all the possibilities over here. Uh, we have more or less covered some of them already, but some of them are a little bit in, enhanced. There are some added, added options, but I, I encourage you to use those functionalities to see, see how they work. But let, let, let's check this, um, uh, this uh, double uh, measure, two measures at the same time. For example, now we're having the case count over here. And as you see, we have a lot of value points. So I'm actually reducing that from the monthly level to the quarterly level. This is how easy it goes. Or let's say, let's make it even more simple, just a yearly level of figure. So now we see how many cases have started in 2015, 1,447, 5,101 cases in 2006, and okay, then in 2017. All right, so now this is like our case count, how many cases started. So now if I want to see as the secondary measure, the case duration, it is indeed this, this symbol. I just select the case duration. So now we see the case count over here. And now we see the case duration as measured per the days. So in this model, we can see that the case count has been like a low level, higher level, and then a little bit down. Whereas the case duration for 2015 was 57 days. And now it went down to 47 days and here to 38.8 days. So two dimensions and uh, showing the measures over there. This is how simple it is. And now the other thing that I wanted to demonstrate today is the chart view filters. So I have the filters over here and, uh, and let me create a new filter. And let's say that I want to exclude something from this model. Let's say that I want to exclude based on Let's say case attribute. Okay. If the region is, and now you see easily the percentage of the cases over here. So we can easily see that, that how big each region is. This helps checking and uh, selecting the right one. But in this case, let's say I want to exclude Houston from this report. So I click on this one and apply the filter. And now it's drawn again, and uh, the figures are a little bit changed because region is not Houston. So that that region is now taking those cases are taking away from this chart. Let's create another filter as well, and let's say that in this time I I want to include items, and let's say that I want to include only those items that actually go through invoice created. So now my, my analysis is showing only the items that do not belong to the Houston and the case has gone through the invoice created at least once. And this is how easy it is to add the chart view filters. And as you can see, there's a lot of possibilities how to uh, specify these, uh, these filters. All right. If there is any questions regarding the chart view functionality, I'm happy to answer. Anything? Only all, Irene, you want me to add or <laughs> make a question? <laughs> what do you, Irene, think about the graphs? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> okay. Yeah, very versatile functionality. This filtering, again, adds much more flexibility to the chart view. Yeah. Yeah, chart view is, is, I think this is a great tool for the analyst who is like doing ad hoc analysis, wants to find some important stuff from the model. And then once the ad hoc analyst finds those important uh, views showing the problems, bottlenecks or, or the trends, then it's very easy to take those views and put to the dashboards. Yeah. And well, now we are seeing this filtering functionality just for the chart view, but well, in future, I expect to see it in all the presentation objects and analysis in the, in the process analyzer. You could filter any, any charts that uh, you have in the dashboards. Yeah. 
yeah this is some sometimes this this uh, chart view is kind of um leading <laughs> leading area where you will you can see uh, new new nice developments and then 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 they will come to the other other views as well yes very good yeah, so we have a question okay can you mix bar chart and line chart okay good question what would you only say how to do it i think there might be some possibilities but i'm not sure if we can do it here from the user interface yeah that's a limitation currently so this visualization selection there where you choose the chart type it affects all the all the series there so currently uh, only one type of chart is there uh, possible and uh, but yeah that could be useful functionality uh, as well that you can select a different chart type for for different series if you really need it that in your dashboard it is doable so well not in this out of the box chart view but you can create a chart presentation object and configure any any chart types there you like yeah. and uh, you can take the uh, configuration here as a, as a basis for your uh, customized chart Yes, so this is basically the area where, in case there is a need to make some super fancy uh, presentations into the dashboards, uh, you can pick the chart view settings from these, uh, these tools and then embed these into the other uh, QPR process analyzer uh, presentation components. And there you can manually change so that you can indeed have a line chart and bar chart. I think, can you only confirm that that is possible with the, with, with that manual approach? Yes, 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 yes. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So so you can you can create those. So now uh, basically what we have here is in this chart view in this KPI designer we have uh, graphically the possibility to do a lot of settings over here. Now the chart view filter is kind of also a, a graphical way to specify the filters and then. All of these can be taken and further extended by going sort of under the hood with the expressions and, and the settings uh, themselves. But with these uh, features already, I would say that, uh, that they really cover uh, a, lot of, a lot of functionalities. Okay, let's move on. This was the chart view. And then there's the next improvement in process analyzer is the compatibility with the excel 2019 well that's sort of easiest for me to show with the with the with the excel client basically maybe there are many people who have not not even seen the excel client not so many users are using the excel cl client anymore because the web browser is so so advanced nowadays but there are some use cases for which the Excel client is super good. Uh, it draws the process flow chart in a certain way. And then when you want to see some, let's say we have a customer pickup, okay, what could be the root causes why the cases go here? Then we have the influence analysis and uh, it all works in a similar way as it works in the, in the web client. But of course here you have the, the data natively already here in the, in the Excel. The other kind of uh, good, good stuff here is that if we go to the profiling and for example we want to drill down to the Robert Miller having 590 cases. If I click on these cases now I have the cases over here and let's take all the case attributes to be visible. Okay they belong to Robert Miller and there are other parameters as well. You see this is already an Excel sheet. So sending this forward is super simple. You just save the seed and send it forward. That's maybe one of the biggest use cases at the moment for the, for the Excel client. And uh, of course you can drill down also to the events level and Excel has the limit of 1 million rows. So you can very easily take the, the data out of the tool for further analysis or, uh, or just giving the list of, of the cases that meet your certain criteria. And now we are supporting a lot of Excel versions. If you ever ever need to check what is it that QPR is supporting, uh, I encourage you to go to the 
process analyzer, wiki pages, and here you see the system requirements. And for example, this Excel client requirements. There are a lot of Excel versions to, from 2010 until the 2019. But also, like in this wiki, you see all the other requirements and supported environments. Okay, so that was our third feature that we wanted to show, the Excel. And now, sort of the additional stuff that, that we are releasing now is the Process Analyzer training video library. And the training video library is a cool place containing the, the training videos, and it's very easy to access. Let's go to the tool itself, and uh, here we just click on this uh, uh, training videos link, and it gives us the Process Analyzer training videos page. You, you log into the community. If you don't have the user IDs, just create a new account, and you will get the account to the Process Analyzer. And uh, here, eLearning Center Process Analyzer training videos. And you get a nice collection of videos. For example, the chart view settings, KPI analysis, basics and advanced, and, and all the stuff is explained over here, conformance analysis, and so on. OK, so this is, this is a nice added value. And if there is anything that you would like to have as a training video, please just contact us and, uh, and we will put that to the, to the video production queue. So we are committed to support all the product features that we have with the training videos. OK, and now let's, let's go here. So 2019.3, I'll give it to, uh, to Olli to, to make a couple of comments. Yeah, so in six weeks there will be the next release and uh, we're expecting to have, have many new functionalities there and here is a list of some of the, some of the highlights. So well, let's quickly go through what are these functionalities. So, well, calculated case and event attributes. So it means that for the process analyzer model, you can define these uh, calculated attributes using our uh, very flexible expression language. So the thing is that in addition to the data that is uh, imported from external data sources, you can also calculate uh, new things based on the expression language. And well, there are many use cases. You can convert data, uh, and um, well, also the it helps with the performance because the calculations are done in the data loading stage, and then the, you can use the calculated data when viewing the viewing the dashboards, and it will then improve the performance uh, a lot. Then clustering analysis. So that's one of the advanced machine learning algorithms there and uh, its uh, purpose is to is to group similar cases uh, together so it's an uh, automated way to to see what kind of similarities and different differences there are in the in in, in your case set and uh, well it's a this uh, unsupervised uh, learning algorithm used there so actually you don't need to configure there anything it just looks all the data that is there all the attribute values and uh, events there and that then finds the differences and, and similarities by grouping the cases in the, in the different groups so very useful way, uh, way to uh, analyze your analyze your data and, uh, look for more more uh, useful useful information uh, all right then folders functionality this is something that we actually already have there in the uh, background uh, but uh, now the, uh, the current workspace functionality which is a kind of flat, flat list of all the views that there are it will be replaced by the new folders screen which is used for 
organizing the news for different different folders and uh, so makes it lots easier to, to manage the ma manage your views. And then again improvements to the chart view and this show others functionality is that so the use case if, if you have a lot of case attribute values and you only want to show the top 10 or something so currently all the others which are left out they are not shown there at all but this show others mean that all the others are grouped together and then you can see that for example the count how many uh, cases are there in this this others group or calculate uh, some other uh, statistic statistics there and all right as the last thing default landing page means that um, all right, currently when you log into uh, QPR process uh, analyzer, it will go to your workspace uh, screen. And um, but, uh, if you have a certain uh, landing page that the user should by default go, so then in the next release that can be configured there by an administrators. And then it means that the uh, users will go uh, right away to that, to that landing page landing page or navigation page or, or dashboard there and uh, makes it much easier to easier to use the system when you are directly in, in, in the desired uh, location but yeah that was a quick introduction for the next release features That's sounds it. like a super interesting set of features so uh really looking forward to to demonstrate those though. Yeah, so if you're also interested uh, to see these new features in practice, you can already register to the next uh, release webinar in this link, where you will also receive the link uh, in an email where I'll be sending you uh, later today, along with the recording of this webinar, as well as the webinar slides. Yes, so uh, thanks for the comment. We appreciate that you find our updates useful and interesting. So uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to send it to us to uh, marketing at qbr.com. Um, uh, thank you everyone for participating today and thank you all the presenters for showing us all the new features and improvements. And I guess we will see you in about six weeks' time for the next release. Thank you and bye for now. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.